If you have some dental problems, we can take care of that too. What you're going to need for this next segment is a standard hemostat. Take a washcloth, roll up the washcloth like you would a section of newspaper, and take some masking tape and tape it into sections. You're also going to need on hand just standard small rubber bands. You can buy these at the dog show out of any kind of grooming catalog. You might even want to talk to your local dentist about getting something similar to this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to band the teeth. A lot of time a dog might have a correct bite, but maybe one or two teeth are out of alignment. Also sometimes on a dog with just a level bite with a slight out with the under jaw, just a tiny bit out, and you just want to rock this lower section back to make it more level or to bring it back under and make a scissor, you can do that with these bands. Okay, this is sometimes with a new dog who you haven't used this technique on before. It is easier sometimes with two people. If it's just you alone, certainly put your dog up on the table, get them contained where they can't run away from you because they don't understand what's going on. It doesn't hurt them in any way, but they don't understand what's going on. Some dogs like this method really well. I'm going to show you how to use this. Just simply open up their mouth. Now, a good way to open up a dog's mouth. See this little space right behind the canine? This is good, too, if you ever need to give your dog some medication or a pill. Simply so slide your thumb in between, in between that canine and the next tooth. There's a soft area right in there. Prop open the top of the mouth with your thumb and have this portion of your back of your thumb up against the back of the mouth. Now they can't go anywhere. See? Now if you had a pill, you'd simply drop it in, push it, release, and hold their nose up. Perfect. So we're going to use that same method here. Place the washcloth in the back of the mouth. You can get the dog used to this. That holds their mouth open. Now, I'm going to try it without the washcloth because there's only one of me. I'm going to take one of these bands. They're tiny. Can you see this? <laughs> I'm going to make it a figure eight inside the dog's mouth. We're going to loop this over the two canines like I have it here on my fingers. We're going to cross this one section over and actually make it a figure eight in the dog's mouth. All right. Okay. Now I'm going to put it around one tooth on this side. There's my figure eight cross and the other canine. See the figure eight? Now, I like to hold this down. See how I'm holding it down on this side and that side? I like to take a nice curved forcep or your fingernails. Simply lift up from the center where you have the figure eight. Pull it over the front of the teeth. Okay, now we're done. Now, you see how this bridges across from the one canine around the front to the other. On this bitch, this bitch when she was younger, she liked to chew and gnaw on the steel front part of her crate. And I didn't realize what it was doing until one day I checked in here and she's actually dropped one of her front teeth. This is a real good process for that because many times especially with toy breeds. You need to watch when you have a puppy toy breed, keep checking the baby teeth to make sure that the baby teeth aren't still in as the adult teeth are growing in. Many times people get the toy breeds and they don't think to look. They go to the vet for the rabies shot at six months or their annual booster DHL and the vet's doing the routine look and you open up and the baby teeth are actually still there intact holding to the root along with the adult teeth that come up behind beside or in front of it and then you actually have double sets of teeth and by the time they pull the baby teeth out of the way you have a mishmash of the bottom teeth or maybe simply one tooth here at the bottom has slipped down as with this bitch because she used to crib or chew on the front of her crate see that drop tooth now with this with this banning I could take this set of teeth and eventually the pressure from this band here is going to pull that one drop tooth back in line with the others. If you notice from the side, from the side, this bitch has what's called a scissor bite. A level bite, if you look, a level bite is when the bottom jaw and the top jaw are even. A scissor bite is appropriately what people have, when your bottom jaw just simply slides under the top. This bitch has a scissor bite. 
You can see it here on the side. However, because she's cribbed and chewed, this front section, this tooth here, this tooth is slanted, and this tooth has dropped forward. So looking at this dog's mouth, you'd go, well, what is this? Now, if you look from the side, you can see that that, yes, that's a nice scissor bite, but she's got this problem here in the front. A lot of times you'll have a dog with a level bite. It's genetically level with the jaws matching top and bottom. But what you may want to do, you may want to pull, you may want to pull this lower jaw up under slightly. This banning across the bottom will do that. It will allow you to pull this back in. Now, if you'll notice here, the rubber band is sitting on the teeth. It's not cutting down into the gum. That's very important. Now, after you get this rubber band on, she won't even know it's there. It's that simple. It's totally unevasive. It doesn't hurt the dog in any way. What I do recommend every single day, you sit your dog down, you simply look at this band. You want to make sure that the band is up across the teeth. It hasn't slid down and is cutting into the gum. Now, the proper way to do this, if you're correcting just a simple drop tooth like that, you may have to leave this rubber band on for three days, then take it off for two or three days. Put it back on for two or three days, take it off for two or three days. Keep doing that back and forth and back and forth until you see that that tooth, that one tooth that's this way and the one drop tooth in the front is finally back permanently where you want it. When you can take that rubber band off and check two, three days later, seven days later, ten days later, three weeks later, and the teeth are where you want them, fine. Then you've completely corrected the teeth of the bite problem and you don't have to put the bands back on ever again. If you're taking a level bite and you're wanting to move that entire bottom section back permanently to make it a scissor bite, the banding has to be done in the same way. Put the band on for three days, take it off for two or three days. Put it on for three days, take it off for, two, for three days. You may have to do this back and forth for about a six month period. But at one given time, you will be able to get those teeth set back and then, then the correction is permanent. Now, I do like to take peroxide and cotton balls while you're correcting these teeth with this banding process. Every time you go to take this band off after your two or three day initial period, go ahead and pad that entire area with peroxide and a cotton ball and do that. For the two or three days that you have the band off, every day put the dog up on the grooming table or in the bathtub and simply peroxide that area. That'll keep it cleansed, it'll keep it clean, and keep the gum very healthy during this transitional period. The dog's going to be very tender, might be a little sore through here. You're not going to notice any difference with the dog's attitude, temperament, or even their appetite. Really, for, for all intents and purposes, they, they have absolutely no idea that the bands are on. This is a nice time to show you another little trick of the trade. This is a product called One Two. You can buy this product at any, at any show vendor. You can also get it out of a wholesale catalog company. What we're going to do here, this is a very typical summer winter nose on this little bitch. Right now we are in the summer months and the pigment in her nose has faded to a light gray, white, or pink color. All these solutions are is ferric subsulfate and tannic acid. If you're in a pinch, you can go to your pharmacy and look up a lot of the liquid poison ivy treatments have one of those two in it. You can also talk to your pharmacist about ordering and getting one of these two for you. You never want to mix the two. You don't want to touch a rag or a Q-tip to the number one bottle and having that number one solution on it, transferring it over to number two. As soon as the number one chemical touches the number two in any volume, it will instantly start the chemical process that makes it black. Keep all of your utensils separate and keep all of your bottles and supplies separate. It's nice to have two people to do this because one person can hold the dog. Obviously, while you're doing this, you don't want the dog to be licking its nose. We're just going to take a regular paper towel. You don't want the tongue to come out, especially after the second solution is applied because the tongue then will turn black. I'm just going to dry this nose. Now as quickly as possible so that the dog isn't uncomfortable. Most dogs don't like to be restrained in this way. We're going to take a Q-tip. This is the number one. With a Q-tip you are simply going to paint the nose.
I'm going to lay that separate. You want to blow this. I'm going to blow on this nose and get that number one solution dry with a separate Q-tip. I'm going to take the clear bottle mark two. We're going to go over the surface of the nose and paint that. You obviously don't want to get it on the hair. If some of the seam is not black black, that's okay because it's a very natural color. You know, it's, it's natural to have pink inside the nostril too. And again, blow on the ear. I've seen some people take cornstarch or powder and the powder the nose afterwards. I've never felt that was necessary. After it's dry, you may want to just dab it slightly with the towel. And you can see now it's pretty dry to where it's not even coming off on the towel. I just recently heard about a new product that's in a tube that you flip both directions. And it's called the Nose Nose. And that would be the same thing. It's ferric subsulfate on one side and tannic acid on the other. This does not hurt the dog. It does not hurt the skin. If you color the nose in this way, this will normally hold color on the nose for three or four days, sometimes longer. Doesn't hurt or harm the dog in any way. Just want to make sure that it's completely dry before they start licking it with their tongue. It's pretty dry. There you go. Summer nose to a black nose.